Good afternoon, traders. This is Danka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com, and this is your futures market outlook for the week starting with November 5th, 2016. We're going to begin with the immediate Dow. Uh, new month, November, and we have a new candle. So far, the new candle is resting on the 10 exponential moving average and on this prior candle high from back in April. So as long as we don't violate too much the 950 zone, we're still looking bullish for throughout this week. Now, keep in mind that this week we do have midterm election on Tuesday. So we're expecting more volatility to come into the market on Tuesday and more particularly into Tuesday night and going into Wednesday. All right, so here we have the weekly charts. The weekly charts after establishing a new high very close to 27,000, actually taking out this prior high from when this vol uh, volatile move started back in February, we made a new high, tapped onto a new value here and quickly reversed. So once we took out the prior, uh, the prior candle low, we've entered a sell setup that took the price not only below the first area of minor support at the 25,860, but took it and violated the secondary level of support at 25,450. In one week, it rolled all the way down to 24,884. And then we had a little bit of reaction to the upside the following week. But we got rejected again, uh, and the price made again a new low to the 24.395. And then last week, not only that we triggered a rotation, a weekly buy, all the way to the upside, but we also failed on that new buy and came in not only to test the prior low from the prior week at 24.416, but we actually made new lows into this major support zone at the 24050. So right now from the weekly chart, price is still trading above the 34 moving average and above the 50 period moving average. And it looks like it really wants to break out a little higher. But so far to me, this is still sort of like a doji candle, even though we have a green body in here. It's just so big. The size is so, so big right here. We're still trading a little bit above, but we're still into lots of cluster of clusters of resistance. All right, so let's move to the, uh, to the daily chart for more uh, information on the daily chart and what we can see currently developing. So after establishing a new high, we roll lower. We rotated from this point on, from the 200 simple moving average, we rotated and we got, the price got rejected at the 10 exponential moving average, breaching the 200 simple moving average, moving lower and establishing a new low. So we had a high, a low, a bounce back and a rejection continuation lower. So we have your A, our B, our C and our D with a rotation. On the other hand, what we have going on here is a high, is nothing else than a high, and two lower lows, but the lower, the second lower low is right into support, which means that any setup to the upside, any break of 25,000 can project the price higher, which it did. And it even broke the 20 simple moving average, coming in very closely into this prior pivot high into the 750 and also into the 850. But the price got very quickly rejected and see what happened on Friday. We came back and thus we have a doji again on the daily. So we had a mini rally, one, two, three. We had our move up and then the price got rejected from the highs, could not have a continuation higher and rotate it. Now, I think the level of interest is 25,000. It has been, and that 25,000 was that coiling around. If you remember, I'm gonna bring back the weekly chart. This is the 25,000 right here. So the 25,000 area was, here it is, the 25,000 was visited back in 
was was actually the only common denominator for the month of September. Oh, I'm sorry, for the month of February, for the month of um, for the month of March, uh, for the month of. Okay, let's see here. Okay, and then we breached. Okay, so let's go to the monthly chart. So much easier. Okay, so here it is. This is the 25K right here. So here we are. And as you can see, because you can see it much clearer on the monthly chart. So here is the February 25K. Let's go to the 25K. This is March, April. We couldn't, uh, we couldn't uh, even reach the 25K. And then back to the 25K, back to the 25K. And in May and in June, back in July again. August again revisiting the 25k and then this is another uh, this is the uh, this is uh, the the visit in October okay and here we are in November again so it was the not common denominator here for the Imani Dow that 25,000 now let me show you the hourly charts okay the hourly charts show that we have a strong level of resistance at the 25,300 we are still captured into the 25,000 right here. Okay, so we're still trading a little bit above 25,000. But we have been gravitating in this area for a very long time. But take a look what happened here on Friday. So not only that we had a sell, so support didn't hold. We've tried a long, very tight stop, 35 point stop, which stopped out. And then we watched the waterfall every single indicate uh, every single candlestick and pattern on this hourly chart suggested a rotation to the upside a rotation to the upside why because we were again since this prior low into an established uptrend we had our low higher low higher lows here and we had a we were establishing higher lows and plus we had a very bullish overnight session on friday which was erased more so, we're back into Wednesday's trading levels. And as you can see here, the 25,000 once again plays a major role this month. All right, so 25,000, critical support. If we break below 25,000, we're going to go much lower. And the target levels are going to be 24,870. And we're going to probably roll into the 24,500 area back again. Okay, so 24, 500 back into these lows right here. And who knows, you know, maybe even lower than that. But keep in mind, things are going to change uh, on Tuesday. Tuesday, a lot of volatility. We may have a sideways day uh, through the trading session on Tuesday morning, let's say, uh, and into the afternoon. But I'm expecting a very volatile evening. Uh, and very volatile following day. All right, so uh, based on current price action, we're still looking bullish. Why? Well, because it's pr the price is trading above the 200 simple moving average and we're trading right on support. Now, whether this was a bounce off support or a little short squeeze into the close, obviously we don't know. So price will have to prove to us what the next move is going to be. Now, Let's move to NASDAQ, okay? Obviously, we're gonna begin, since we have a new month, we're trading within a new month, uh, we're gonna start with a monthly chart. Monthly chart barely, barely keeping uh, the uh, 10 exponential moving average, and it's also trading into this resistance here at 7,000, so it's so obvious that the, if the price is gonna cross above 7,000, it remains bullish if it breaks below 7,000 and 7,000 is going to be that lid and it's going to be that pressure that receives that rejection, price is going to continue lower. Let's go to the weekly chart. Weekly chart, we finished off with the doji. Uh, we actually came in very, very strong into the 6580 again and we have rotated off this level and again, we're maintaining that 50 period moving average right here. So the price is really trading into that 6980 zone. 6980 zone is also resistance from this prior, from these prior pivot lows from back in June. 
and also beginning of October. So if we're going to get more selling pressure at this level, we may come in a little bit more. So the question is, are we in a downtrend or are we still into an uptrend? Well, based on the weekly charts, we are is still into an uptrend. Uh, are we in, into an uptrend on the monthly charts? Yes, we are. This was just a one bar pullback, so it doesn't have a pattern into it. Uh, are we in a downtrend on the daily chart? Because we're, tr we're uh, currently discussing the daily chart right here. Well, let's take a look. Double top. Uh, what was so deceiving about this double top is the fact that this high, this peekaboo high here, actually made a new high, 77.28.75. So it was not your typical double top with sell, okay? Because in this case, you needed to have this top close, uh, close lower than this prior high. So this high should have remained the high, the real high of the year because we're talking about the daily charts and we're talking about all time highs, but this was an all time high. So we managed to make an all time high and then we received this rejection. So are we in a downtrend or are we in an, uh, in an uptrend still on the daily? Well, based on the price action, uh, based on Friday's price action, and if the price is gonna pump more downside and the more we trade below 69.33, and I think these are going to be those lines in the sand. So 69.33, we need to, price needs to stay below that, number one, and then accelerate to break the 6,900. So as you can see here, it only has a 30-point cluster, and we're talking about a 30-point cluster uh, in the context where we had oscillations of two and three hundred points in NASDAQ. I mean, how often do you see this? I mean, this volatility can be recorded because perhaps we're not going to encounter this kind of volatility pretty soon. OK, this kind of volatility is not common for the market. It's not. We've had years and we had uh, segments of five years, eight years, where we haven't had volatility, or three years where we haven't had volatility, and then we had a volatile move, and then the market sorted out everything, and then it shows the direction it was higher. Because if you look on any kind of time, any kind of really large time frame chart, even the pullback that we had back in 2008, as scary as it was, it was a pullback in the context of a very bull trend, very bull market to a very, very strong market. Okay. So as scary as it was in 2008, all that pullback was just presented as with, with a great buying opportunity moving forward. Okay. So first things first, are we currently in a downtrend on the daily chart? Because as day traders and as swing traders, we get most of the signals from the daily charts and from the weekly charts. The weekly charts suggest that still NASDAQ has a lot of resistance at 7,200, okay? And then we're gonna go back to this. Let's pull up the weekly charts, okay? Um, and we still have a lot of resistance, okay? A lot of resistance at 7,200. This is the 7,200 line right here. Okay, so we're still, okay, let me just pull this. Okay, here it is. Okay, this is resistance. And because the price is trading right now below this support line, below this, below this resistance line, uh, below the support line, right? We didn't get the rotation here. So we fell, right? So now this resistance, this resistance right here becomes Cap becomes selling pressure for price action. So that's why the price is unsettled at this area. Once the price is going to trade above 7,200, things are going to be a little bit more clearer. We're going to break back to the upside with a really nice tar with really nice target levels into the 7,500 and back into the these highs of 7,700. As long as the price remains below 7,200, we got to take it one day at a time. 
And being a day trader and a swing trader, I could tell you that I'm taking it one hour at a time, four hours at a time, four directional bias, because we are into an unconfirmed downtrend. And going back to the daily charts, okay, this is that line, you can see it right here, and the price is just meandering, and it's just oscillating above, below, all right? So here's what we have going on. High, two lower lows, and we have one confirmed pivot high. Now, for this recipe to, com to be complete, we need to have at least two lower lows and two lower highs to have and to enter into a determined downtrend which we currently don't have. I mean, we did on Friday and then we zipped up with vengeance in the overnight. Okay, so what happened, we had Apple earnings, uh, the, the price went lower, uh, Apple being a big component of NASDAQ took the, took the price lower. Obviously, it influenced the NASDAQ price. It went lower and then in the overnight trading session, even though we gapped down slightly, very small gap down, we have reversed based in the overnight trading session and we came into a new high. Let me show you what happened, okay? We gapped down, we rotated up, we based, and we just made a new high. And as you can see, we came very close to that 7,200, right? Every, any attempt to trade above that 7,200 will push the market higher. Once we get into that area, once digested, any pop over 7,200, then the next pullback with support into 7,200 is going to be that perfect reversal zone. And that's when we're going to be looking for, uh, more, for a more confirmed swing to the upside. Okay? Not being uh, overly crazy here with buying bottoms all right so with that being said 7,000 and 7,200 remain key locations key areas for nasdaq let's move on to the mini &E s&p 500 we're going to start with the monthly chart price below the 10 exponential moving average okay price below the 10 exponential moving average but also note the fact that 2700 is support from this prior candle high from April. So the more we stabilize into this uh, uh, 2,700 level, we may see some power push to the upside, okay? Uh, now, this is, uh, is way very soon. We only have a few days under our belts with uh, the Ebony S&P, but let's move to the weekly charts. Okay, weekly charts. So last week we flurried down. We actually closed, we actually closed weak. Although we closed weak, we closed into support, into this whole cluster of support. And now we're dealing with the same volatility, even actually more increased volatility than we had than we had back in February and April and even March but we're dealing with that support zone, 26,000, 27,000, 28, uh, 20, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, 2,600, 2,700, 2,800. These are, and as you can see, they're moving in 100 point increments, okay? That's volatility. All right, so uh, I wish it was easier, you know, but it's not. And again, like I said before, we're gonna be taking it not only a day at a time, but we're going to be taking trading one hour at a time. And by the way, stocks, uh, uh, stock, uh, 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 any kind of stock trading, uh, swing trading is going to be pos postponed until after uh, election. So we need to have a true confirmation of the direction of, uh, of the market before we initiate any kind of trades, okay? I am not an aggressive trader. I'm very conservative, and this is how I intend to approach um, this election again. Uh, 2770 is the prior uh, high from last week, is this week's high, and as you can see here, 
plenty of resistance, right? Plenty of resistance from these prior pivot highs right here. If we try to push higher, and again, we need a substantial move and a sustained move higher. And in fact, we did have such a nice constructive move um, on Friday, but everything just collapsed. Everything, we were just advancing. We were ready for a breakout over 2760 area, 2770 zone. And then what happened, we just, we just collapsed. Okay. So we need to trade, we need to trade above 2780. And if you recall, back in June, the 2780 was the big area because we spent three weeks into that area trying to digest that 2780. So we snapped up, went back down and back up again to 2780. So this is going to be, this was the big breakout zone. The 2780 was the common denominator not only in March, okay, you could see it obviously was in February, it was in March, okay, and it was in June again, all right? So this is what the e mini S&P needs in order to have uh, a bullish confirmation for, and especially for, you know, day trading and swing trading as well. All right, so let's move on right now to the daily charts, okay? So the question is, or I'm getting tons of emails saying, okay, I don't know which direction I'm gonna trade, I'm a day trader or I'm a swing trader. Is this market higher or lower? Okay. So I could tell you right now that things are going to be choppy because we had a high, we had a low, we have one, two pivot, uh, uh, two lower highs, and we have two lower lows. But at the same time, we're trading again on support. Take a look at the support on the left hand side. Take a look at the support from February. Okay, lots of support here. So we are not yet into a confirmed downtrend on the daily chart. For that to happen, the price needs to close above, uh, needs to close below 26.95 and stay there and push lower. Then we will short any kind of pop into resistance, okay? And until then, that's why trading is difficult because we don't, have a very clear directional bias. All right, let's move on to Russell. And actually, Russell has been one of the strongest indices um, all last week, all last week. And uh, let me just clear this. All right, let's move on to the monthly charts. Okay, you can see the monthly chart low prior month low. this is october low so that's in the books and we're getting a rising candle on the monthly chart now let's visit the weekly charts weekly chart has managed not only to trigger it, it and in fact is one of the most bullish candles that we have russell is one of the strongest indices okay it's actually the only index that has finished green, here it is, on Friday. It actually finished green on Friday, 0.48% up and 7.4 points. That's substantial, okay, that's substantial. Also, last week, we did not make any new lows. So we actually have or lows from October, from last week, okay? From the week before that, I'm sorry. So this is a very bullish chart structure here because it is reversing from the support established last November. That's right, and that is a year ago. So we have substantial support here and we're reversing at this point, okay? so. I would say to pay more attention to Russell, remember that back in February, Russell was the trendsetter. It was actually the Russell that rotated and actually continued higher. And then we had a pretty steady reversal in the Dow, in the S&P, in NASDAQ, but the trendsetter was Russell. It was like we had our market gauge. It was just giving us clues. It was the strongest structure. It was had the strongest pattern. 
All right, let's move on to the daily charts. Okay, daily charts bounce off the support zone. You can see the support visited here, okay, and here. So this is from last November and mid-November last year. We had a uh, move up and then we had it. Keep in mind that when, when we rotated to the downside, Russell has made a high really early this year in September. While, you know, NASDAQ, the S&P, and um, Dow made highs later. And Russell did not manage to make a new high, and it just grinded lower. It had a, an extreme difficult time at the 1700. It showed clear signs of breakout. Everybody was like, okay, Russell's strong, we're gonna go long. You know, everybody was like, yeah, IWM calls, et cetera, et cetera. No, and it failed, and it failed, and it failed, and it failed, and it failed. Continued on, continued to fail. Okay, continued to fail. Take a look at this resistance at 1600. Back into these prior pivot highs, and it just reversed. Test it against the lows here. Look at the bottom. Look at the bottom right here. Bounced, reversed again flurried here now is this in a downtrend no it's not monthly charts weekly charts are very much in uptrends very much in uptrends what we had is a more abrupt pullback on the weekly chart structure on the daily do we have a confirmed downtrend no we don't no we don't because we have the high and we have one two lower highs we have one, two lower lows, but we have a reversal in progress here that is very, very strong. Okay, very strong. So if we are to continue higher, I think that Russell has relative strength and he has more capability to move higher than the rest of the indices. All right, let's move on to gold. Okay, let's move on to gold here and let's see what we have going on. First off, monthly chart, new candle. Okay, new candle. We're still not trading above last month's high, but we're working on it. Okay, we're working on it. So we have a low, higher low, higher low, which means that we may be moving higher. Okay, we may be moving higher. Uh, 1245 has been that breakout zone for quite some time. And in fact, remember this area right here, the 1234, we were looking at this area for a continuation higher. Then we had, look at the, uh, look at these tiny candles here and look at these highs. They're trying to lift and lift again. So they're really trying to rotate here and push the price a little bit higher. So monthly chart is encouraging for another leg up it's a little bit of a messier pattern but uh it's 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 a structure that is working so the price is really working on pushing a little bit higher again it has a lot of issues into the 1234 and 1240 and this is due to a prior pivot from last december from where we had that rally going into january okay and now we're trying to form, so since we had the flurry down, we're trying to get the lift and we're trying to get the lift and we're trying to get the lift here. So last week, not only that we triggered a sell, but we reversed very, very quickly and we're trying to push higher. So uh, the weekly chart is very bullish if it trades over uh, the 12, and I'm actually gonna set an alert here, uh, the area is right below 1240, 1239. So I'm going to create a quick alert here because this is a, uh, it's going to have that really nice price velocity and may push higher. So if we're going to get a very messy uh, indices kind of week where we're going to get again uh, really rapid moves where you don't stand a chance like you, by the time you, tap onto the candle to see where the high is to see where the low is and to see you know all the values and what the setup is and how to position size the price has gone 150 points okay so there is no reaction time i i there is no trader that can have 
a, a fast enough reaction time, not unless you're an algo. Uh, and again, one of the biggest issues was the fact that we had this increased stretched out risk which is which was astronomical and especially into a market that doesn't have a good directional bias it doesn't promote a structure where we could say oh yeah i'm bullish shorting is not an option or i'm bearish uh, uh going uh, going long is not an option okay so this is very difficult we may be looking at gold gold is definitely going to have a reaction post election uh, it's either going to go up or it's either going to go down. It's going to have a violent reaction. So let's move on to the daily charts. Daily charts, you can see that we have a lot of resistance at the 1240 zone. Uh, 1240 zone comes, uh, this resistance, this structure has been created also from these prior pivot highs here from July 30th. And you can see that we try to, we, we have tried to hold the uh, 1220 level and we breached it here. And then again, we have, uh, uh landed into the structure here into all this chop right here but we have reversed very nicely and we're moving a little bit higher now again this week this week and this is actually a doji this is going to be very decisive here number one if we trade and these are two trade ideas if if the price is going to trade in gold below 1231 it may continue lower for a short term if the price is going to trade above the 1240 zone, it's gonna have an acceleration in price most likely to the 1245, 1248, and into the 1260 area. So I favor more the upside because it has a better trajectory and it has that tradable void, and the, we may see the price just literally pulled up to these levels. All right. Now, let's take a quick look at oil. This is a little bit of a longer uh, video here. All right, let's take a look on the monthly chart. So we have a new monthly candle that has just, uh, that has just triggered the sell right here, right below this support level into the 64.50. Landing a little bit higher. Now take a look at the structure of the monthly chart, 62.50, guess what? minor support from this prior pivot high from may 2015 okay so again we have support there and i think that there's a lot of selling pressure on price right now can it go lower well it can do whatever it can uh but here's the thing support 64 uh 64 20 violated number two 63 30 we had support and it was violated. The price came even more. We also had a rotation here, very strong price action that we had back in April and we have it at 61.80, okay? So we may continue a little bit lower into, into the 61.80 zone, but then again, we're landing into these areas right here and we already have one, two, three, four candles to the downside. If we turn a little bit lower and we try to pull into the 60s, that would be the fifth candle. It's also a fib number, and I'm expecting a reversal off into the 60 area. Okay, so let's move on to the daily charts. Daily charts, again, very messy. Top, one, two, three, four lower lows, one, two, three lower highs. From the daily chart, we have one, two, three, four, five, bingo. All right, here it is. Over $64, this is going to be bullish, okay? So I am going to, and this is for short-term trading. Nothing is very long-term. I'm looking at a possible one, two, three-day swings. Over $64, the price may continue higher, may continue higher into the 66. This is gonna be the target zone. $66 is gonna be the area. Now, if we accelerate to the low side, we need to see a clear break of $62.60, and then we may go into that 61.80 to the 61.50 zone. Okay, so this is oil. Uh, also, RBOB, RB, I'm also gonna be looking, only looking on to the, uh, onto, I'm sorry, onto the weekly charts for this week. 
Uh, the weekly chart is fast approaching the 200 simple moving average. I would like to accelerate a little bit more into this area, into this mid section area of 166 and i think that this is going to provide us perhaps with a good entry you already have one two three four candles on the weekly chart this would be and i would like to see a little bit higher volume uh and also i would like to see a, a smaller size candle here in uh our uh bob and this is gasoline for a reversal. All right, let's 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 take a quick look at heating oil. And heating oil has been a little bit stronger uh, than, uh, than crude and than uh, our Bob. Uh, heating oil is on support, and you can see the support here from this prior pivot high from the beginning of the year, from January at the 213 level. We're going to be looking to see how is how it will... Uh, establish this low if we, we and we still have uh, room to continue into the 210 so watch it for both uh, it, it, watch it for both directions okay uh, first off there is resistance uh, there is resistance uh, at the 220 level right here at the 220 and this is from the daily charts from some prior pivot lows uh, if this area is going to hold, then we may see more selling pressure come in at least into the 210 zone. All right, uh, let's take a quick look at natural gas. All right, and this is by request. We have a few members that have uh, requested to take a quick look at natural gas. Natural gas is actually looking really nice so we got a really nice lift from the bottom and throughout 2018 and has not made a new low below 250. so it's actually the, the 250 level was that line in the sand and it's pushing the price higher right now so right now the price is trading at three dollars and uh 29 cents it's actually trading into resistance from this prior pivot high from april but it still has room for uh, uh, it still has room for higher. So again, this is very early, but the weekly charts look very good. So last week we had a trigger over 3.25 for a continuation higher. And again, if we get a continuation higher over 318, we're going to get that push. And for those of you that like to day trade, uh, natural gas, you can still look for a continuation higher. I actually like the daily structure. We have a sandwich, uh, that a bull sandwich that may take the price way higher back in, uh, back into the three dollars and thirty five cents. And these are prices that we have not visited uh, since um, uh, since uh, when it was October seventeenth, October eighteenth, and back uh, beginning of October. So these are October values. Actually, what I'm noticing here is that basically we have a really nice bull flag formation uh, and any break above these highs of 333s and three, yeah, 330s can project the price higher. And I do have a measured move for that can push the price into 350 and 361. So it looks a lot higher from the current structure that we have, not only because we got a really nice lift from September lows. And in fact, we did have the double bottom uh, sorted out from the beginning of the year back in July, retested in July. And we got that beautiful lift in September. We had the rally and now we're getting the next support level established at the 310 and a rotation back higher. And like I said, we have a really good risk to reward ratio in natural gas here as well. All right, uh, let's take a quick look. I forgot to mention silver and silver is getting interesting because I'm looking for a breakout and only a breakout over uh, 1495. In fact, I'm gonna set this alert here. I had this alert set a, longer t a long time ago, but uh, it didn't trigger, so I erased it. Uh, this is going to be the line in the sand. I'm not going to touch silver unless I see a clear confirmation for a possible swing or swing slash core trade. 
uh, that can blast over fourteen dollars and uh, and ninety six uh, around ninety six cents. So over fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars is going to be that line in the sand. Uh, unless it uh, unless it trades over fifteen dollars, I am not going to do anything in silver. Uh, let's take a look at copper because copper was extremely strong on Friday and on Thursday. So let's take a quick look. All right, here we go. Copper. Here is the copper. I already have an alert here, as you can see. Uh, and let's go to the weekly charts first. Weeklies. All right. Sorry. New month, new candle, bull sandwich here. What's not to love? Uh, over $2.84, we have a full blast off in copper that may take the price back into $3. And once it works out that $3, $3.25, this is going to be the push higher into the 3.30 level. I love this cluster right here. Absolutely love this cluster. And also, these lows are higher than the prior lows right here. And we have the bottoming effect from 2016. 2017, another strong consolidation, got that lift, and we got our 2018 uh, uh, temporary bottoms here at the 254 level, which, which are slightly higher than the prior lows here. So we may witness a really nice reversal. So once the bottoms were put in here, the shelving into 2018, into 2017, a new shelf in 18, this is going to be a major breakout over 284. Uh, also, the we uh, I'm sorry, the weekly charts. Yeah, the weekly charts suggest higher. And again, you can see you cannot really pinpoint the stop when you're trading copper. Uh, stops are going to be most often uh, taken out because take a look at the uh, take a look at these structures. Okay, so you get the trigger. Let's say here you got the trigger, and if you would have had the stop here, you would have been stopped out. Okay, so you need to wait for a a, a better kind of launch pad so wait for it to trigger 284 or so and then let it push up if you want to get in with confirmation which were which is going to provide you with a better risk for your trade rather than having your risk all the way here into the 254 or try to squeezing it squeeze it into the 270s or so 265 i mean uh then you're going to let it pop higher let it pull back let it rotate and then uh, that next setup that develops is going to take you uh, with a really nice confirmation uh, higher. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful chart. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, let's take a look at ZB um, bonds. Okay, and this is the 30-year bond. We're going to begin with the monthly chart. We have a new monthly candle, and there we go. We are having an inside monthly candle so far, still very early in the month, uh, but we're still trading into a lower continuation, which brings us to the weekly chart. So do we have room to continue lower? Oh, yes, we can. We do have plenty of room to continue lower, and this is a bear flag that we can see here in the 30-year bond with a new found support lower lower in fact than 140.25 and we have the new resistance into the 139.30 area and we have uh this meltdown here under 136.28 we could get more selling pressure that is gonna may take the price lower into this prior low of 136 and we have the next target level into 134 so we uh I'm, I'm sorry yeah into 134 so we have a really wide tradable void into that area and this is the 30 uh 30 year uh let's take a quick look at uh, zn which is the 10 year because what i've noticed on the 10 year is that we had a quicker reaction to the downside and this is the weekly chart now remember that if this week we're going to trade below 117.29 this area right here 28 actually uh the price is going to trigger a weekly sell and this is also a bear flag and the next target uh the next target for it is going to be hold on hold on okay the next target is going to be uh 117 117 uh, which we already had here uh 117 13 is actually 117 12 uh 12 5 
but if we break that level, we have a tradable void all the way into 115. Okay, so that's gonna be, uh, that's, these are the technicals. All right, guys, I know this is a very long video. It was a very long video, but uh, keep in mind that this week, I'm gonna be overly conservative. Um, we do have midterm election on Tuesday in the United States. Uh, and things are going to get very heated up. I'm expecting a lot of volatility. Uh, we had a lot of algo action into the end of uh, the day on Friday. Uh, I think that most of the sell that occurred on Friday were traders, investors that didn't want to have their money invested into the market throughout the weekend. We may see more selling uh, into the beginning of the week, Monday, and actually maybe into Tuesday uh, because people are going to be overly protective. They want to pull their money out of the market. There may be a lot of trading opportunities, but at the same time, uh, the risk may be very much increased. So uh, very careful trading into next week. I will be extremely cautious. Uh, and uh, believe me, there is going to be the time when we push the pedal to the metal. Uh, we're getting, we're fast approaching again, uh, window dressing, uh, January fact. So we do have a lot of trading opportunities out there. Uh, whether it's the, whether there are going to be to uh, trading opportunities uh, to the uh, long side or to the short side, as day traders or even swing traders, we do not care uh, because money can be made in both directions so again be very careful trading this week uh stocks on watch is not going to be out this week uh we're going to take a look at the markets post election we actually have uh, some webinars scheduled uh post election uh and uh, we're going to review the markets uh after that so we're going to wait for the volatility to subside we're going to be looking for clear clues in the market uh, and uh, we're not going to be very aggressive on uh, on these, uh, especially in these two to three days. Thanks so much, everyone, uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And uh, for those of you that are my subscribers, I will see you in the trading room on Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Have a good rest of the day.